from Los Angeles, California with the Mad Scientist Party Hour. Oh, hello there, friends. Welcome back to another episode of Mad Scientist Party Hour. My name's Kevin Kraft, joined as always by a man who is completely nude from the waist down and is currently taunting a bound and gagged homeless man with his boner. That's Jeff Clark. (laughs) What's up, y'all? And transmitting to us from a satellite in orbit, the bearded booger-eating cosmonaut known as Shuddy Boy. Yo. Man. You stink? I literally... Took a shower um, right before we started recording, and I already have BO. There's, there's something did going on. Did you put on. deodorant on? I did. My body is turning against me. It's old age, buddy. You're it's creeping. A, You're it's a biological revolt. You're a, a pubic hair away from being 40. God, I hate that. This is the last... The last MSPH of my 30s. You will... Terrifying. Uh, next week will be uh, the first time that it's a middle-aged podcast. Yeah, you're single-handedly Officially. taking us into senility. Yeah. I mean... We're, o- we're, we're only going to be steps away from being an AARP-endorsed podcast. Hey, that makes you a leader, Kevin. That's nice. I mean, I feel like I've Googled this in the past, and people set middle age at different different levels. I don't know what the what the life expectancy is for a human in America right now. Let's see. Average life expectancy US. How about with a guy with gout? 78.79. So I already hit middle aged. Yeah, but uh, let's say forty is officially middle aged. Yeah, maybe I'm just—I got my old man stink going, dude. I didn't wear deodorant to the six two six nine market, and I was kind of tripping because I've been sweating a lot lately, especially when I've been out and walking. But shout out to the stinky tofu. I didn't, yeah, yeah, for a mask and my 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 bo. I actually didn't have any body odor. It uh, was an impressive performance from a body odor and sweating standpoint. Me walking around the six two six nine mark. It wasn't nearly as bad as I thought it was going to be. I do also use um, like those hippie deodorants that don't have any aluminum in, or, in, in them and some shit, and they do give up faster than most deodorants. Natural deodorants do not hang on very long. Like I, when I wake up in the morning, like uh, on nights when I'm either at Carl's place or she's at mine, and we both wake up and she like rolls rolls over and snuggles into me, and then she's just like, oh, and then rolls back the other way. You would think that it, she should have only done that two or three times and known not to do that anymore. I just take the whole Beavis and Butthead approach to it. I'm just like, yeah, I smell like a man. I'm telling you, you should fart. You're getting closer. I guess if uh, your your armpits just compensate for your farting. Yeah, I wonder what if I'm just, she if I'm... does that. You perfect. It's the morning, so you definitely have to fart. Just Dutch ovener, and we'll see where it goes. Maybe I've been holding in my farts for so long that they're just starting to seep out through the pores in my armpits. It could be. <laughs> Wait, what kind of deodorant do you use? What's the brand? Uh, Secret. I think it's strong enough for a man, but made for a woman. <laughs> I think like that stuff would just melt off me. Like I'd I'd apply it to my pits, and then you would just see like vapors of it deteriorating and floating away. I think it's called like Tom's or something. I don't know. I buy it at Ralph, so it's probably still shit and full of chemicals and stuff. I thought you get it from like Kiehl's or I don't know a nice like like maybe a Bed Bath and Beyond or something. I don't know. I use Old Spice Night Panther. Yeah, I think I'm on Old Spice Fiji. 
Ah, uh, Old Spice Fiji is a good one. That I think is a good one. I think I used I to rotate rock that. through. Uh, I rotate through the Old Spice scent catalog. Um, As do I. I, I. I'm currently using. What the fuck are we talking about? Uh, their Old Spice uh gentleman's reserve body wash and it's because i'm a gentleman and amber scented it is fucking amazing it does sound wonderful sharon likes it when i wear the sex panther though guys no, hide your nice girlfriends panther. we're talking about our scents. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna bombard you with our pheromones <laughs> uh i don't know what that means i'm just giving you a courtesy laugh you said pheromones yes Whatever. Too many syllables. Based on context means. clues, Jeff, what do you think it could mean? What the fuck is a context uh, clue? I would say it's a fancier word for fragrant or fragrance or scent. <laughs> I think that's you're not. Yeah, sort of. Right. All right. <laughs> Kevin, come what does out it mean? In your in your scent profile, and they are intended to attract mates. Yeah. It's like the uh, <laughs> like the color hex code, like uh, the 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 smell pheromores. I mean, weren't they trying to pass off, pass off Spanish fly back in the day, or something along those lines? Yeah, like you could legit go into a Seven Eleven, buy a little tube of liquid, and it's like slip this in a girl's drink when she's not looking, and she'll fall in love with you. It's supposed to be an aphrodisiac. So just a you know a nicer way of drugging someone. Yeah, I, I like until just that that popping into my head right now, it never really clicked with me that it was like priming people for roofies. Like, hey, slip this girl. If a girl doesn't like you, slip this in her drink. See what happens. Yeah, just to give yourself a a better advantage. And imagine if that shit actually worked. Seven Eleven is legit selling. A fucking love, love potion potions. right there at the checkout counter. Well, don't they sell boner pills that work very well? I think all they do is just turn your skin red. And then you just get a fear boner. Jeez. You can't fuck on a fear boner, huh? Or maybe. Eh, you never know. A boner's a boner. <laughs> yeah, you gotta put it somewhere. <laughs> Might as well fuck with it. Uh <clears throat> Uh oh, the hell's <sighs> happened to you, Shuddy? I so I'm still adjusting to using a MacBook uh, on the on a daily basis, and I had to scan some documents for work uh, to email. But I'm not used to not having a USB drive or a USB slot. Uh, and I forgot to email them when I got home. That's all. Hmm. So now I have to do that real quick. Oh, so I have administrative issues, kind of. Admin- yeah, I just m- having a MacBook is not, not fair. More is is an adjustment for me. Well, I'll send you my best wishes. I think you'll pull through. And you can be able to add another proficiency to your resume, strengthening your employment uh, candidacy. Kevin, Man. we got to discuss that bullshit homework assignment you gave me and Shuddy. Oh, you're going to pretend you didn't like it still? Oh, yeah. I'm not. I'm not pretending anything. That fucking Grand Budapest Hotel. You saying that that was better than Eight Mile? is on the Hall of Fame of bad takes, at least for me personally. I'm trying to think of rival bad takes. The only other ones that I have would be like sports bad takes that really would just fall flat with you, so I'm not even going to waste your time. But I I don't understand what you could fucking like of this movie. If you just give me five eight-mile scenes, right? Scene where Papa Doc and his crew beats up Eminem. Scene where Eminem raps at that fucking weird, like, parking garage party thing that they have scene where Eminem raps at work scene where Eminem battles Papa doc and the scene where Eminem beats up or punches his homie for having sex with Brittany Murphy. 
And then you fill the other 150 minutes with him just working at the factory, just unedited footage of him just doing factory work. That is way better than Grand Budapest Hotel. Like as soon as I saw Jason Schwartzman and fucking Jude Law <laughs> on the screen at the same time, I almost fucking puked. I almost fucking puked. I, I I want an hour of my time back. I actually watched this, Kevin, at 1.30 in the afternoon just so I wouldn't fall asleep. Still fall asleep for a good 40, 45 minutes. Granted, I did wake up at like 2.30, 3 o'clock a.m. to watch the British Open. So I so was how a little much, tired. A, a, on a percentage... How what percentage of the movie would you say you actually watch? Thirty three to forty percent. Okay, so if I put on Eight Mile and just fucked around on my phone for the movie, and then was like, "Oh, that movie sucks," you think that's in an adequate adequate review? I think if you gave it a shot to watch it and it didn't hold your attention and you hated it that much, I, I would take that into account. Yeah. I'd be like, oh, would wow, you, Kevin must let, have really hated it. Let's, let's, before we, I, I'm going to, I think I'm going to solve this problem, hopefully. Jeff, had you not fallen asleep, would you have turned it off or would you have watched it till the end? No. It's not a yes or no question. <laughs> Jeff, would you like an orange or an apple? No. Wait. You well, said a, if I, I thought you said if I've fallen asleep, would I have turned it? Would I have continued to watch it? I said, would you have turned it off or continued oh, to watch oh, it? And you oh. said no. Oh, I would not have continued to watch it. Absolutely not. No. All right. So that's fair. Then his it's point also, is va- no. That's not fair because you can't. That's it's the same exact thing as wh- where we were before this um, quote unquote homework assignment. Jeff was shitting on a movie he's never seen, and here we are a week later, and Jeff is shitting on a movie he hasn't seen. But he gave it a he gave it a chance, and he has determined that he disliked it enough he would have shut it off had he Dude, not fallen asleep. I was yeah, reacting. I'm fair, not buying it. That is a fair reaction to a movie. I, I was Wikipediaing. Budapest and hungry just to like stay alert just so I wouldn't fall asleep. Meanwhile, I can't even get past the trailer to want to watch this film. So you didn't watch it either? Nope. So both of you guys didn't watch the movie. All right, cool. I mean, I saw the first 20 minutes and then the last 20 minutes, but I did miss a good, I would say 40 to 45 minutes. I gave it a shot, Kevin. It was fucking, it was fucking awful. And the Puminati, for the most part, agree. I mean, it pulled at 16.7% in our, in our three-way poll with that versus that eight mile versus Scott Pilgrim. I tweeted, you goddamn motherfuckers. And then Justin Peacock replied this past weekend at Justin P54698998 said, I always listen to Kevin on movie reviews and even tell my teen kids about his anime reviews and have never been dissatisfied. However, I'm currently halfway through Grand Budapest Hotel and I've never been more angry with another human being in my life for having me watch this. You you ruined a Puminati's day. This guy doesn't even like me and Shuddy. He's following 11 people. <laughs> me and Shuddy aren't one of them. He's following... Jason Ellis, Mike Tolley, Kevin, you, Dingo, Katie Ellis, MSPH Quotes, MSPH Podcast, The Ellis Show, A Fucking Casino Fairy, Britney Spears, <laughs> <laughs> and Ash Music, who I think is a, it just says her description, Angry Woman Out Now. It's a, I think it's a, it's a musician. So this guy has tweeted twice in his life, and one of them was to you, shitting on you for making him watch, having him watch Grand Budapest Hotel. And you're pointing a fucking corny-ass letterbox D as your one argument of it being not terrible? I mean, come on. Like, we haven't proven time and again critics, and not even, not even critics, audiences can fuck up votes. I mean... People are mad about the outcome of all the of every election that's had in this fucking country. 
I, I wouldn't be surprised if people are fucking voting poorly in movie reviews. So at, at an average of 790,000 people, Grand Budapest Hotel has an 8.1 out of 10 on IMDb. Well, I, I can't even explain that. 790,000 people. This movie is terrible. And we, we should also point like out, for, for people that aren't on our Patreon, just to give a, 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 an insight into how Jeff's mind works, Jeff, who calls himself the Snack Sommelier and considers himself to be a, uh, a big food aficionado, hates You're vegetables. You're going to my entire brand. We're not going to just keep this to movies. You're going to go out my entire brand. All right, here we go. Hates vegetables. It's a character assassination, Jeff. I, I'm here. I see it. Snack, snack Somalia he needs to be a vegetable fan. All right, cool. All right, go ahead. C- hates continue. all vegetables, hates seafood, hates sour cream, hates mayonnaise. You have all these things. You, you are pickier None of than which a, are snacks. You're pickier than a toddler. So you can't have all of your food opinions are completely invalidated. The sour cream thing still, I can't wrap my fucking brain around. And the way he looked at me, like, I know it was, we were just on video, so nobody got to see it. But the way he looked at me when I said, what do you do on your tacos was like, I was the crazy one for putting sour cream on them. Like exactly like that. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I, I mean, all I've eaten for tacos has been street tacos for the past like 10 years. And when in Taco Bell growing up, I would just have like the regular hard or self soft taco, not the not the Supremes, because I didn't like sour cream. And you should hear Jeff's think... bitch ass order at In and Out. Like what has what? to take has to take so many things off the burger, so many things. It takes like ten minutes because he's like, um, oh, I don't want this, I don't want that, I don't want this, I don't want that, I don't want this, I don't want the sauce. Uh, Someone needs to stop you because this podcast is about to break up. You're coming at my in and out order. Are you fucking serious? That's a very personal thing. I've worked on that for years. Yeah, and it's quite vaginal. I think the people need to you know. Don't, you, while you you're don't trying to assail me fries. and filibuster, people just need to know the bitch assness that is the essence of Jeff Clark. Okay. It's been well documented, my bitch assness. <laughs> Say what you will about it. So has yours through years of podcasting. This this Grand Budapest Hotel bullshit takes your bitch assness up to another level. Me fucking not liking sour cream, whatever. How much worse is that than you not liking onions? They put onions in fucking everything, even things that you like and eat and enjoy. You so tell you, you prob- take you get lettuce off your burgers. Lettuce is I, in more things than than onions. Yeah, and I'm. Uh, Oh, actually, I'm uh, not that okay with with lettuce. I, I don't. I'm pretty consistent. I don't really like vegetables. I don't. I, I mean, whatever. I don't know what that has to do with Grand Budapest Hotel. Why don't you go over? Your I'll tell you. I will tell you. Budapest I'll tell you what Hotel. this has to do with Grand Budapest Hotel. I'm I'm painting a portrait of Jeff Clark as a human and the failure of a human being that you are. And like a how, Republican so right as now. I said, this is a, that all of that was what a defense attorney does to a witness for the prosecution is character assassination to make whatever point they're making, which is obviously valid, invalid. Yeah, I'm trying to withstand this cross-examination from this just badgering fucking lawyer. And I'm, tr- I'm trying to defend my movie taste from two guys who haven't seen a movie. I watched I am not taking more than side, half of it. I am not taking a side one way or the other. I am just only agreeing with Jeff that his uh, food takes don't necessarily factor into this. I just but need people to know, Shuddy Boy, the same that time, when at with the same Jeff time, is going to try shut you off. at the same time, while they may not be. All right, how do I mute Shuddy Boy? To uh, the current conversation, they are valid. Shuddy, shuddy, shuddy. No. I wasn't even listening to what you said. I'm going to take Jeff's approach to reviewing movies. Don't, don't hear, I didn't hear what you said, but whatever it was, was wrong. And I said that your point Jeff, was valid. Jeff, 
No, he's, he's right. Kevin's he's right. Don't so, argue with him. So now, so whatever. That's fine. <laughs> I listened to you the whole time. Shut you know what, unlike, how about this? unlike Grand Budapest Hotel, which I did not pay attention to the whole time. Yeah, so this this entire discussion is just moot. Jeff's wrong. We can move on. I mean, I watched, I think, the first half an hour in the last... I missed 40 minutes of the hour in for, a 40-minute movie. So I probably I missed you 33 said you to 40 percent slept through an hour of it. What's up? I thought you said you slept through an hour of it. I think I slept through 40, 45 minutes. I saw nothing of Bill Murray. I saw Bill Murray's name in the credits. Like, what the fuck? He was in this movie? So Yeah, sometimes you have Bill... to watch a movie to see the people that are in it. Okay. Well, I had trouble through the first 40 minutes of the movie. So I just, just took a little nap. And then I watched like the last little bit of it. What did you like about the movie? I'm confused. Like, give us your review as if you were watching it the first time and like you were reviewing it on MSPH. Uh, I think that it's it's funny, it's interesting, it's unique, it's well acted. I like the script. I like the characters. I like that um, Ray Fiennes just like loves fucking old ladies. I think it's kind of hysterical that he runs this hotel basically just so he can fuck old ladies. I like how flushed out all the characters are. Like, how they... All, like, the little details they put in. Like, Ray finds That character is just... I find very entertaining and funny. The fact that he has to put on so much cologne, he takes himself so seriously that you can smell him, like, 45 minutes after he leaves a room. Um, I, don't, I, I like the way it was shot... I think it's a, a bright, a visually a very bright, unique movie. I guess I'm struggling to follow how you found it enjoyable. Like you're like, all right, this is cool. I mean, this is I like, think ah, he ah. just explained how he found it enjoyable. I don't know. Uh, I think he's saying um, critic review type things and not not really appealing or speaking to the essence of the film, the storytelling. Well, the as story the case has been made, fucking whack. You're, I, what's the story? Uh, essentially, you are having sex with Ray Fiennes, and then when you die, you gift Ray Fiennes a fucking nice portrait that he ends up trying to flip on the ba- black market with Mufasa or Aladdin, whoever the fuck that guy is. Um, and there's a a fight to get that or uh, that picture back, led by the family of Tilda Swinton. Are you and uh, Adrian <laughs> Brody? I think is the guy who's leading the charge. He has a couple good lines in it. That was that was funny. His some of his shit was funny, but it really only brings up Grand Budapest Hotel up to a, a half a dick, if that. Actually, I can't even probably give it a half a dick. I'd probably just have to give it a zero. Or an incomplete since I didn't watch it all the way through. But it's and you didn't like Willem, you didn't like Willem Dafoe's character. No, not really. You didn't like the fact that he gets angry at a guy and throws his cat out the window. <clears throat> Actually, that part was that part was hilarious. You know what? You got me. That part was hilarious. <laughs> I will say that of the eight uh, of my friend, the Puminati that. Follow me, and I follow um, on Letterbox D. Eight have watched it, and nobody has rated it lower than four stars. So Jeff and Jeremy, right? Yeah. Oh uh, no, wait. Hold on, Justin. Justin, I knew it was a J. Do seem to be in the minority. And what Terrible. did what did the rest of House Clark say when you said you were putting on Grand Budapest Hotel? Uh, Bill Bill was at like was hanging out with the girl, and Cheech was at work. I was by myself. Have you ever gotten told, their thoughts on it? Well, I mean, Bill didn't like it very much. He's kind of like hit or miss on Wes Anderson films, and then Cheech just isn't going to watch it based on my review. So we need Shuddy to break the tie here. Actually, Shuddy, I, 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 I have resigned myself that 
this is such a polarizing topic that I'm going to have to swallow my stubbornness and just watch the movie. And just so we're clear, Grand Budapest Hotel did pull at 23% worse than 8 Mile with the Puminati. So there is there is a flaw to now outside of the five dicker action, five dicker action bracket, there is a flaw to which Doug Benson addresses every week because he does these he pits like the, the suggestions that his guests pick against each other. Yeah. This is the Lots second of, time we're gonna sound like Donald Trump. All right, Shuddy, can you mute this fucker so I can like finish one sentence at least? All right. Lots of people vote in these polls without having seen all of them. So if people have only seen either Scott Pilgrim or Eight Mile, they'll vote for one of those. I feel like if you look at something <laughs> I was joking. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Jeff, you have to un- <laughs> you have to unmute yourself. <laughs> I said that, that's a fair point. So, if you look at things like Letterbox D, IMDb, the audience reviews on Rotten Tomatoes, because I know you don't give a shit about the critics, these are all the thoughts from hundreds of thousands, and in Letterbox D's case, over a million people that saw the movie and gave their thoughts on it. And it smokes Armageddon and Eight Mile and Judgment Night. And you, who just admitted to watching thirty to forty percent of it, and then pointed, it, I pointed out scenes to you because you asked me what I liked about it, and then when I said them, you're like, "Oh yeah, I like that." So just think about all the other scenes you might have liked if you actually watched the movie. If I show up to Ellis Mania, I want all 16.7% of those voters to come up to me for an automatic wedgie or a mandatory wedgie, excuse me. I don't know. I've made my thoughts pretty clear on Grand Budapest Hotel. I, I, I'm like, I find this whole conversation, frankly, to be stunning. Like, we're really talking about Grand Budapest Hotel over eight mile and Armageddon. I'll listen to Judgment Night because enough people have been like anti that movie. So like, maybe it's just me for whatever reason. Maybe it's just me, but come on. The eight, Grand Budapest the hotel is better than fucking Armageddon eight mile. Like bullshit, bullshit, <laughs> bullshit. There's n- no way someone could, I, I don't want to be friends with a person that thinks that I don't even really believe you think that Kevin, I, I, I believe you think that about eight mile because you're weird, but you really, you think, Grand Budapest Hotel is better than Armageddon. Really, you enjoyed that movie more. Really, I feel like the whole reason I brought up the whole food discussion is because I think this carries across the board. You have I like what I like passionately. You have a garbage palate when it comes to food, and you have a garbage palate when it comes to movies. Like I think you would Ruthless. rather have you would rather have Arby's then go to like a Michelin star rated restaurant for dinner. Yes, probably. So the lists that the Mm -hmm. popular lists that the grand Budapest hotel is on, on letterbox D (laughs) are, uh, thousand and one movies you must see before you die, which has 1245 films on it. Uh, well, what is reality sense. and official top 250 narrative feature films? Help. Judgment Night, on the other hand, <laughs> Jeff, is on Jeff Random looks so movie pissed. Roulette. <laughs> I am. This is <laughs> all the movies. You made it a character. Movie posters. <laughs> And the long weird you have list shitty of taste. movies. <laughs> so we had an argument in my one of my homie chats about like what has the best food scene. What which country has the best food scene? Country. Yeah, and I took America, right? Because we have the most diversity, right? So I mean, you could get. I took LA specifically over any country. I mean, think about how many different like 
types of cuisine you could find in LA. And then my buddies started getting on their little fucking Googles and doing their corny ass bullshit research. And someone found a fucking a list of Michelin star restaurants. And he, he said he made the argument France is better than America. French cuisine is better than America because they have X amount of Michelin star restaurants and was well ahead of America. But that doesn't, to me, doesn't like mitigate how badly America smokes France and the other fucking food demographics and the other food categories. Like, sure, you have Michelin star restaurants. And how many times have you been to a Michelin star restaurant in your life, Kevin? I would say probably more than the average person because you're into shit like that. But like, I've, I've probably been to a Michelin star restaurant once or twice in my life. I mean, how many times have you actually been to a Michelin star restaurant? I don't know because they it's they don't advertise it the way you think they would, you know. Like if if I if I started a restaurant and it got a Michelin star, I would have it fucking plastered on the. I would have like floor to ceiling window decals bragging about it. But nobody nobody really sniffs their own farts about it. I never even knew that Moza was um, a Michelin star restaurant until after I had eaten there a couple of times. But in all honesty, that might be the only one I've ever been to. Yeah, I mean, if a tier below it, a fucking restaurant does well in the Zagat survey, they put that shit all in their front door. Yeah. But like a tier above it, they don't care about the fucking Michelin star. So, like, that's what I feel like you're doing here. It's like, well, you know, I feel like Grand Budapest Hotel, it has a better director, it has a better cast, it's clever with its editing, and it's goofy little fucking, I don't know, a scenery. But, like... You don't really enjoy that more than like an In-N-Out burger, which is what I would compare Armageddon to. You know what you're getting. It's fucking delicious and it's bomb every single time. Whereas these Wes Anderson movies, yeah. I mean, if you're smelling your own farts, if you're going to a Michelin star restaurant, which no one fucking does, sure. Like you can make an argument. It's um, uh, a delicious move. Well, you got a point with the the Wes Anderson thing because – I don't, I don't go to bat for every Wes Anderson movie. Like, I, th- I think we covered this last week. There's a handful of them that I, I didn't even really give a shit about. But then again, there's some that I think are fucking awesome. Like, I thought Isle of Dogs was really cool. Um, I, I Rushmore I think is hysterical, and Grand Budapest. But like, I don't know. I I feel like, sure, you can shit on restaurants that don't have a drive through but <laughs> okay, all right i can enjoy both you just have a, like a very limited palette and i think even if you watch grand budapest hotel and actually watched it not just slept through it and you liked it you still would have come to the show and lied so I mean, because you'd rather you'd rather again, you just go pull further some into this character Jeff Clark shit than actually admit you liked something. So either my taste is bad or I'm a liar. So this was never going to go well for you, I guess. Honestly, I think it's both. I, I'm a I'm a Kevin, I'm a liar with bad taste. You are this is, a this is rigged aggressive today. This you is are, rigged a rigged witch hunt. You are very defensive. And you are... Because Jeff's been firing off these little fucking needle dick shots at me all week. I don't even this know. Is, this is more than just his take on Grand Budapest Hotel. This Jeff's, is, Jeff's been this sending been me texts, digging at me, and calling me a pussy, and then I say something to him, and he's like, oh, character assassination. True refuge of a coward. A pussy is a general statement. You called me a liar with bad taste. And the and the fucking the fucking sword I had to land on for your bullshit is uh, you 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 how fucking dare you, Kevin? How fucking dare you with your betrayal? Oh, I try to keep what it are we just doing? movies. You what are we doing? Are we doing a show here? Cocksucker. What are we are we trying to put on an entertaining show for people? <laughs> I quit in this show. God this damn is my you. last time ever. Jeff Clark, you fucking vagina. I just, the most important thing I want you guys to remember about me is that I would not stand to watch the rest of Grand Budapest Hotel. I wouldn't give it my full attention because it was that fucking terrible when I did. <sighs> let's talk about something different. Yeah, let's, 
just maybe get me back on board with this shitty ass podcast. Let's do that by playing Letterbox D. <laughs> oh God, the gayest app. Oh man, it's even gayer than Grinder. I shuddy. I could not agree more. What a fucking fantastic idea. Yeah. Go to the fucking app full of Kevin Yes Men. Letterbox D, Letterbox D, it's Letterbox D, the D stands for dicks. It's the Letterbox D game. <laughs> fucking show no, mer- no mercy this time. Uh, so when I put this together, it, we were going to play it last week, but had too much other stuff to talk about. Uh, so this is uh, people who have either had birthdays or died uh, the w- week leading up to last episode. Wow. So I like the duality of it. <laughs> well, it all spawned because of James Khan dying. And and Jeff uh, comment on him. His best movie being a racer. Yep, that's the one. I told that to Mark this weekend, and Mark looked at me like I was making something up. It was like, nope, that's what that that's what Jeff said. Oh, because um, what the fuck? Are we were hanging out with our friend Jared, and he said something, and oh, what the fuck movie were we talking about? It's like, is it that one with the guy who, uh, I'll, anyway. You know, just just um, remembering that little factoid, I can see defeat. Jeff clearly has better taste in movies than me. Um, well, you haven't seen The Godfather, so you don't even really know James Conn's best movie, probably. Godfather 3? All right, guys. Let's, James Conn is on this list. Let's, oh, shit. <laughs> anyway, July 5th was one Robert Fitzgerald Diggs birthday. Is that, is that Tay Diggs? That is Bobby Digital himself. Oh, shit. Rizza. Well, happy birthday to him. So, Jeff, we'll let you go first. Movies that... The Rizzo was in? Yes, as an actor. Oh, There no. are a lot of them, <laughs> and we have all seen several of them. Uh, or I wouldn't have picked him. I'm struggling to think of any. Was he in? Jeff, that face you just made is what my heart just made internally. <laughs> I feel like I'm confusing him in common. Was he in Smoking Aces or is that common? That was common. Son of a bitch. Was he in any of the Kill Bills? Wait. I'll go nobody. Hmm. Kevin. God damn it. What's Saul Goodman? Man, I know there's a glaring one and I can't fucking think of it and it's going to kill me. So yeah, Jeff's Jeff's gonna win this round. I'll just go, man with the iron fist. Because it was okay, kind of cool, and he directed with it. The iron fists was number sixteen. God damn it! So it could have beaten me. And nobody. No. Oh yeah. Um. So American Gangster. Ah, that's right. Uh, was number five. I didn't really like that movie. Pop star Never Stop Never Stopping was number four. The Dead Don't Die was number three. Oh, Shuddy Boy's favorite. Minions, The Rise of Gru was number two. God damn it. But and nobody was number one. Ah. So you turn at your own gay ass game, Kevin. Every time I Kevin got I zero points. It smells terrible. How many points Kevin, did I get? Three. Nice. July 6th birthday, Jeffrey Rush. Dude, Kevin, I'm, I'm you telling you, first. I always have hard nipples. Jeffrey Rush. Jeffrey Rush. I feel like I can't... I can't let myself get defeated by saying another movie I love... With Jeffrey Rush in it. 
um, that Jeff would also put on probably the same level as Grand Budapest Hotel. Uh, God. What's the banger, sisters? <laughs> Fucking. Mm, mm, mm. I don't know if this is going to work, but I'll go. Because I can't think of the fucking uh, the subtitle of the movie, so I'm just gonna go with Minions, the first Minions. Jeff, fuck, fuck, I'm gonna get smoked in this game. That's what I get. Can for I go peacocking. Pirates of the Caribbean? Which one? Yeah, that's that's the that's the bear trap that I almost stepped in. I don't even know the name of them. Uh, hold on, I'm gonna rattle off about a dead man's chest. Black Pearl C. Okay, Black C Pearl. you have to you have to pick one. I don't know if I'm saying the right things. I'm just saying things that it, it could be. How about Black Pearl C? Black Pearl. Black C Pearl. I'm gonna let Kevin like I'm gonna Kevin let Kevin rule on the validity of that. Is he close enough, or do we let him make him go with the one that he said the name of correctly? I feel like for Jeff, he's close enough. Okay. Uh, I'd take either one of those, to be honest. If I said something correctly, the, holy shit. So which one do you want? Do you want? I'll take the one that I said correctly. I feel Dead better Man's about that chest one. Or Curse of the Black Pearl? I'll take Dead Man's Chest, even though Curse of the Black Pearl is the, probably the right one. But I feel better if I actually said the right, or I said one. Yeah, now I, I feel like a complete nincompoop because I was, for some reason, I know who Jeffrey Rush is, but I was thinking he played the tentacle mouth guy when he didn't. He was Barbosa, and he's in almost all of them, I think. And my guess is the first one will be the now that Jeff is locked. We're both locked in. I think Curse of the Black Pearl is probably the number one. Great, but so, I think I'd still beat you. I think honorable mentions: Green Lantern at number nine. If if King's uh, Speech is number one, I'm gonna pull a turd out of my ass and headbutt it. Minions was number eight. Fuck. Then we've got On Stranger Tides, uh, Dead Man Tell No Tales, At World's End. Then number four is The King's Speech. Number three is Dead Man's Chest. Two is Curse of the Black Pearl. Finding Nemo is number one. Oh, son of a bitch. Where does House House on Haunted Hill rank with... uh, Tay Diggs, <laughs> Fam- Famke Jansen. Who else is in that one? Uh, I'm struggling to remember who else is in that one. I think that movie kicked ass, though. Mystery Men was number 19. Oh, yeah. He's the bad guy in Mystery Men. Are you, I don't think he's in House on Haunted Hill. No, he, he is in he one 100% of those. 100% is. He's the, he's the roller coaster. Oh, uh, sorry. Magnet. It's... um. Number 22. <laughs> Damn it. What's it, uh, can you give me some details in that movie, or is that de- uh, derailing you too much? No. Does it have like, a rating uh, in front of you? 2.7. <laughs> so Jeff thinks it's a good, five-dicker. I thought it was a pretty good remake. Have you guys ever seen the classic with Vincent Price? No. No. I've uh, seen this one. Yeah. Well, uh, no, you know what? I'm confusing this with the the, the remake of The Haunting. Yeah, that was with uh, Liam Neeson, right? Wait, no, that could be wrong. That feels wrong. <laughs> All right, next person, also celebrating a birthday on July 6th, Kevin Hart. Kevin, since you're at Double Goose Eggs, you can go first. Ah, what was that movie where he like screamed and made a silly face? All of them? Jumanji, welcome to the jungle. I don't like that frowny face that Shuddy just made. I think I got another goose egg. I'll go 40-year-old virgin. Oh, strong. Small role in that one, but definitely a popular film. Yeah, it'll show up on those lists. It'll hit the algorithms, if they say, as they say in Banshee. <laughs> uh, Fast and Furious, Hobbs and Shaw was number five. Oh, yeah. 
Then we have She's Jumanji, the, the next level at number four. Is that the one you said, Kevin? No. No, he said, welcome to the jungle. That that was the first one with like The Rock and... What is The Rock in that one? You might win this one then. I fucking... Uh, 40-year-old virgin was number three. Ooh. This is the end was number two. And Jumanji, welcome to the jungle was number one. So I get a point though, right? You do get a point. Okay, I'll take it. So you're and what, five, now, five to three? What's the score? It is five to three. And Jeff, you get to go first oh, on no. the man who died July 6th that prompted this game, Mr. James Kahn. Fucking shit. I swear to God, if it's a racer, I'm going to be so pissed. It's got Arnold. Arnold shows up. I don't, he crushes the algorithms. Man, a racer sucks ass. Completely way underrated movie. Let me tell you. All right, I'll go Godfather. I'll just I'll just play Racer it two point eight currently on. I don't know what other further evidence that I need that this app is bitch made. And Kevin, what a, did you really just pick a racer? No, he picked Godfather. Okay. Mm. Man, I don't know if I should go for Godfather two or Elf. Son of a bitch. You should definitely do Godfather 2 and lock that one in there. I don't know. These these algorithms are weird. There's a chance Godfather 2 could be higher than Godfather 1. But they're R-rated. More people see Christmas movies. That one's a classic. That's, that's true. Yeah, you should do the Christmas People movie, watch actually. the fuck out of those. Mm. I hate staring at Jeff's ass and making a risky move, but I'm going to go with Elf. Wait a second. Is that your final answer? Are you, are, we, are you locking that in? Yeah. Stupid. Actually, no, that wasn't good. That's what you should have picked. Wasn't he not in Godfather 2? He did oh, get not? murdered in God, Godfather. I guess. Yeah, but I know Godfather 2 has flashbacks. It's been a long time since I've seen Godfather 2. I don't think he's in Godfather 2. All right. So, Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs was number five. Woof. Misery was Dodge number that four. Bullet. Elf was number three. Shit. He is in The Godfather Part Two. And The Godfather Part One was number one. Nice. Mm. So for those at home, the score is now eight to four. Jeff is winning. And Kevin gets to go first on Shelley Duvall. I mean, The Shining. Jeff. I, I fucking tap. I'll, I'll hold the L here. I, I got, I couldn't tell you one other movie she was in. I, I, uh, I don't think she was in a movie. Didn't she die like right after that? <laughs> She's still alive, Jeff. Right. Oh, yeah. That's the point. It's her birth. Okay. <laughs> I had to, I have no I have we could sit here and stare at each other for the next hour. Uh, I have nothing. I have, you have nothing. a second one you can give him, Kevin. What about Popeye? Should, yeah, I mean, if you're gonna allow me to guess that, then yes, I'll take Popeye. You're right. She plays Popeye's love interest. You're right. You and her name her is name? no, no. I have no. I, I, I haven't Olive seen Popeye. Oil. I haven't seen Popeye since I was like. Four. Do you Popeye know, was number seven. Do you know the name of the character in Popeye who's always trying to rape her? No. When's the last time you guys have watched Popeye? Do you remember the hero's name in Popeye? Popeye. Okay. <laughs> yes. Don Corleone. How about his? How he about his hamburger? Who gets muscular. Friend? Nothing. I don't remember his. Yeah, name I don't even remember it. Anne it's, Hathaway was in Dark Knight Rises. Wimpy. Uh, Wimpy, you're right. And The Shining was number one. So Kevin has turned this into a game coming down the home stretch. Uh, Two, Kevin Bacon, Jeff. Wait, what were Shelley Duvall's second and third movie? 
Oh, one of those dogs um, just got the treatment. Nashville was number three. Annie Hall was number two. Ah, yeah. I don't think Kevin I've seen Bacon. either of those. Kevin Bacon. I'm picking with my heart slightly here. I want to say JFK because that's my favorite movie. Jeff, that he's just in. know if you get this one and hit the number one movie, you would make it in if Kevin and you it's can mathematically make it mathematically okay. impossible where Kevin could possibly not win. No, right, no pressure. I'm just, I, uh, I know this isn't going to do well. I'll, I'll, I'll guess Mystic River. Kevin? It's just not me uh, X-Men First Class. I forgot he was in that. The score Good is movie. now Jeff, eight. Kevin, 10. <laughs> Woo! God. Uh, Apollo so 13 was number four. Mystic River was, I'm sorry, Apollo 13 was number five. Mystic River was number four. Then we have at number three, the original Friday the 13th. Then at two, Crazy Stupid Love. And then X Men First Class at number one. Okay, Jeff, did you see Crazy Stupid Love? No. Awesome movie. Yeah, I bet. Like, how much, like, compared to Grand Budapest Hotel, better or worse? I'd put Crazy Stupid Love, which I've only seen once. And I do want to give it a rewatch. I'd say that's a four decker. Okay. But Grand Budapest is five? Yeah. Gotcha. Okay, cool. Yeah, I can't wait to see that. So, yeah, Jeff, watch this movie that Kevin thinks is not as good as Grand Budapest Hotel and see if you like it more. Yeah, it's you like rom coms? I mean, he doesn't think Armageddon is as good as Grand Budapest Hotel. So, isn't Adam Sandler in Crazy Stupid Love? No, I don't I'm thinking think so. Spanglish, probably. No, I think or it's Punch it's, Drunk Club. It's, uh, Emma, That's it. That's the one. Emma Stone, Ryan Gosling, Steve Carell. And, uh, oh man, I'm blanking on the chick's name that was in, I think she was in Death to Smoochie. I like that movie a lot. The one, not Catherine Keener. Yeah, I think Catherine Keener's in Crazy Stupid Love, I think. Um, I don't know. I've been wrong Jeff, a lot lately. you can still win this. Doesn't feel like it. I feel like the game is sliding away. You can still win this. I feel like Rory McIlroy going in the but, 18th right now. Yeah, and only being allowed to use your pitching wedge uh, because this could be a trap for you. And I apologize. Uh, I didn't expect it to be this close when we got here. But uh, the final actor is Mr. Rip Torn. Fuck. Oh, no. I'll go dodgeball. Fuck. Fuck. Do you you care to say the the full title? Dodgeball, true underdog story. Do you have a tiebreaker queued up in case it gets to that point? Yes. Yes. You know it doesn't get to that point. <laughs> no, bitch. Jeff, I think you. I think you got me. No way. There's a. There's a big movie. I'm not even. There's probably a fucking. Actually, after you make your guess, I'll, I'll yeah, say what stop, I was about to say. Stop. <laughs> yeah, because like, I don't know why I have this like mental roadblock. Oh, oh. Uh Here we go. Men in Black. Oh wow. I said there's probably a Pixar movie that he was in. He's got like a, a I don't know, like a noteworthy voice. I get, makes I get him, him for voice acting. I get him crisscross with Brian Cox all the time. Yeah, he's like American Brian Cox. Is he American though? I think yes. so. So 
uh, honorable mentions, RoboCop 3 at number 15. Yeah, RoboCop 3. I think that one was PG-13, so that one can fuck off. Uh, Freddy Got Fingered at number 9. Ooh, good one. Men in Black 2 at number 5. B-Movie at number 4. The Seinfeld Pixar knockoff one? Correct. God damn it. And then, as I said, this was a trap for Jeff as he chose Dodgeball, a true underdog story, which was number six. Oh. Uh, Honestly, Jeff, was, if, if, if I went first, I would have said Dodgeball. Uh, Mary Antoinette, starring Kirsten Dunst. Number three was the app. <laughs> Disney Hercules movie. Sure. Uh, and number one, starring Tommy Lee Jones and Will Smith. Finish him. Suck on my dick. What the fuck is? I don't have. Ball? I don't have bad things to say about Men in Black. That's a fair loss. Whatever. I had. I was so thrilled at how this game started for you, Jeff. I really thought. Really thought you had a chance. Yeah. Well. I just don't no, know the shitty app like It Kevin was all does. downhill from Shelly Duvall. <laughs> yeah, for real. <laughs> the fucking double bogey on eight just sent my fucking round spiraling. Bad well, news. Jeff, if it makes you feel any better, I won the Letterbox D game, which has zero consequence, but I'm losing in every other aspect of my life. Oh, what happened? At least, at least you got to crawl to prop you up. For now. Yikes. <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> I really uh, hope something doesn't happen because I'll feel like shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Oh man, oh man, oh man. Well. Uh yeah, I, I mean I did just have to go to Florida for my my grandpa's memorial and I I knew I was only going for a couple of days so I and I didn't want to check a bag and stuff. So I just packed all my shit into a carry-on. And right as I was getting ready, like it was late at night and I was looking through the... My family has a group text going that just dings nonstop, so I had to fucking mute it. So I sometimes miss a lot of things in there. And they were saying that the, the funeral service was Palm Beach casual. And I have no idea what that means. I know... L- linen pants and a button down. Yeah, which I don't really have. You know, I have I have my nerdy shirts, I have my death metal shirts, and then I have suits. And they were like, yeah, don't wear suits. We're keeping it informal. So I knew I couldn't show up with a death metal shirt. So I, I chose to go the option of when I got to Florida, I was like, my mom lives pretty close to a mall. I'll just go to the mall and, and buy something to wear. And the family had uh, like... There were all these different things going on throughout the weekend, and I knew there was going to be a spot for me to go. And I kind of thought maybe it would be like a group trip, like my mom and my sister might want to take a stroll over, you know, five-minute drive to the mall. But everybody had their own shit going on, so I went by myself, and I was like, oh, fuck, I really need an adult for this. So I, I did a lap of the whole mall, making a mental Rolodex of places I could go in and buy something that would be whatever the fuck Palm Beach casual means. And I go into the store... Black, like black khakis. I was like, sure, that works. Then there was like a white button down shirt. Sure, there we go. That works. I found it. I go into the dressing room and try it on. And it almost, the shirt almost acted like a magnifying glass for my nipples. And I was like, I probably shouldn't go wet t shirt style. To my... all nipply. <laughs> yeah. I shouldn't I shouldn't show up looking like a wet t shirt contest for my grandpa's funeral. So I put that shirt aside and this place had like a lot of button down shirts, but they kind of looked like old man button down short sleeves, like Tommy Bahama style shirts, which my grandpa fucked with, and I kind of figured that would fall under the the umbrella of Palm Beach Casual, right? Sounds yeah, specific. It sounds I feel like absolutely legit. I feel like Tommy Bo 
what is it, Tommy bah- Bahama? What's his name again? <laughs> Whatever. I I feel like he makes the fucking Palm Beach casual jerseys. Who's fucking Tommy Banana? <laughs> Tommy yeah, Bahama. What's, what's his name again? Bahama. Tommy Bahama. <laughs> sure. Where do people go on? Where'd you go on vacation? The Bahamas. <laughs> I was gonna go to Cuba, but you know, travel there's a little tricky. So I, I, I found a button-down shirt. It was like kind of like a darker blue with a couple flowers on it. I was like, this looks fine. So I, I texted a picture of it to my mom, and I was like, I need, I need an adult. Is this, is this cool? Can I wear this? And she was like, yeah, of course. So I didn't even bother trying it on because at that point I had spent so much fucking time walking around the mall, looking at shirts, spinning in circles like a dumbass. So I just pulled the trigger. I bought it. The day of- Real quick, what was the the vibe of the mall? Was it dying or was it th- was it thriving? Were there chicks there? There were chicks, but they were young chicks. So let's just say if like if we were like in eighth grade or freshmen, it would have been like it would have still felt like yeah, cool time to go to the mall. There's girls to talk to. As far as like women our age. Eh, not really. I, it, it wasn't quite Southern California Mall, but it also wasn't the dying and boarded up Mammoth Mall. Okay. All the stores were open and a respectable amount of people walking around, which was nice to see. Uh, but, you know, I, I, I got all that stuff. I raced home, wake up for the morning of the funeral, and I showered and stuff and brought my clothes in there and I, I got dressed and stuff and I look in the mirror and I was like, oh, man. And I walk outside, and I, I just put my arms out. I'm like, I don't know about this. And my mom and my, my mom and my sister started laughing, and I was like, I, I look like a Vegas bookie. Like I do that thing because like when I when I do my hair, I like I get out of the shower, and I comb it back, I slick it back, and then put gel in it and stuff, and then you know do the stupid side part and shit. So at this point in time, I had all I had done was. Slicked my hair back, put on the shirt, put on the pants, and I walked out. And I looked like my name was fucking Polly Walnut. I, I'll, I'll send you guys a picture. Uh, again, again I, that does not sound far off from how I envision Palm Beach casual. Yeah, I feel like you're hitting. I, again, I'm. I I can't wait to hear how this went terribly wrong for you, because. In my mind, this sounds like exactly what you should be looking like. It should be like a flowy button down, like short sleeve shirt that maybe is a little too baggy and hangs down to just below your elbows and some flowy linen pants. It's got to be a combo deal with me starting to look more and more my age and the slick back hair. But I really look like I was showing up to that funeral to break thumbs and, and collect loans. It's... Okay. The, okay. the pattern is lame. <laughs> it is. It's lame. But it feels like that. That feels like Palm Beach casual. It's definitely the hair. If you had your hair more like it is now, but combed instead of pulled back to show your receding widow's peak, it yeah. probably wouldn't have been so. But that, I mean, your pants are a little too tight also for what Agreed. I would envision Palm Beach casual. But the shirt is exactly what I would think. If not, bag- it might not be baggy enough. Yeah, and like breaking people's thumbs. Like I feel like you're giving yourself way too much credit for your Robert De Niro impression. It's not that good. It's it's pretty good. It's not one of, it's not one of your better impressions. It's not nearly as good as your shutty boy. It's it's hard to look like you're gonna break somebody's thumbs with that much sunburn. Yeah, you yeah, you you look you look like you're about you, to go outside and you're just gonna burst into flames. Like, <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, you don't scream enforcer or like <laughs> muscle. Like that's not that's not the impression that oh, no, I no, get. No, no, I wasn't trying to say didn't have this hairstyle in a movie recently. I wasn't trying to say that I looked intimidating. Grand Budapest Hotel. No, you definitely don't like intimidating. Wait, somebody in Grand Budapest look like this? He just said Tilda Swinton had this haircut recently. Oh, oh. Yeah, I don't know. What Actually, movie this kind of looks more. Well, now Willem Dafoe had had a buzz cut in that movie. 
No, I don't know. It feels like you're checking the Palm Beach casual look. It wasn't how I was expecting to look when I put when I saw the clothes and then put them on. I guess I could because <laughs> I, I didn't. I, I was just like I was like you know what I've I've worn shirts like this before. I know what this is going to look like on me. And then when I put it on, I was like, that is nope. That is not what I was picturing. It's not how I envisioned it looking on me. So did you go to a? Did you switch it to a Monomarth shirt or like? Nile or Black Dahlia Murder, one of those guys? No, I, I showed up looking like Polly Walnut. And did people look at you funny? Did you get comments or odd looks? No, because I fixed the hair, and once the once I got rid of the slick back, it didn't look as bad, but yeah, I definitely looked like a chode. So you looked Palm Beach casual. No Tommy Bahama for you, I guess, huh? I mean, I do have a, like Hawaiian shirts. If I had known that would have been chill, I would have worn one of those and not even bothered fucking wasting money at the mall. I think you're, being... you're never going to wear again. No. What did Carl say about that shirt? Did she see it? I didn't show her. Maybe she'd be into it. Her opinion matters more than us. What's worse, her hating it or her really liking it so you have to wear it again? Ooh, wow. Good question, Shuddy. I mean, I'm I'm just used to having zero fashion sense. So if she hated it, then it's just business as usual. That's okay. But if she loves it, she'd be like, "Can I call you Polly Walnut?" No, no, no. Wear that to bed. Leave it on. I didn't mean it quite like that. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. All what right. can I say? Now what? Let's by, mount voice chode, now? Chode by default. Um, I was trying yeah, to switch I, over to see if anybody had emailed us, because I haven't checked the email in a little little, little bit. I got nothing to review. I, I banged out six of the eight episodes of Barry last night. That's Holy the only shit. thing that I can, I can review. What'd you think? Uh, I thought it fucking ruled. I think... So the cliffhangers... This season and just Barry in general are so fucking gnarly that like I try I I kept wanting to go to sleep after the last episode, but then it was just like the cliffhanger was so like just kept me um locked in. But like the episodes are so short and it's only an eight episode season that I feel like the best way to do it is to binge. Like if I was watching it week by week, I would have been just like I'd have been, I don't know. I'd have been like too jacked up for Barry. I thought the season was pretty awesome. I like how it was like more violent. Uh, I felt like it was more violent, at least more of like an almost like a fucking action movie type thing. Um, it definitely like final, is, feels like it's going less and less comedy and more and more serious. And it was I like a heavy, that. heavy season. Right. What did you think of it? I liked it, but I miss, I miss the days when. Barry was an actor. Jeez. Word. Okay. Yeah. Just, I, just, I just agree also with you. just finished season eight. I, the funniest, the, the episode that I found the funniest was, I want to say episode six was the one with the dirt bike gang chasing him over $1,700 and they're riding down the freeway on the dirt bikes. That was cool. I just, I laughed my ass off hysterically when the guy pops out of the van with the, the light machine gun and goes to shoot him and misses and goes hand off. And the dirt bike guy tries to smack it out of his way and he fucking falls and hits a car. I <laughs> fucking died laughing at that part. Like, it was just, I don't know Dude, why. my favorite part was the final episode where uh, Sally's all pissed off that her show gets canceled and she talks to Barry about it. And, and Barry's like giving her ideas to like, fuck with the, the lady who canceled her show and <laughs> which straight up like yeah we'll take a picture of her sleeping and send it to her or we'll replace it won't her. be anything direct we'll just get in her head and eventually she'll kill herself no big deal. <laughs> no, the best one is like, I'll rep- we'll replace her dog with another dog with a slightly different dog <laughs> I thought that was hilarious <laughs> and then Sally rightfully was like, what the fuck? What the fuck, dude? Get out of here. 
don't know. The, that, I guess that's like one of the issues that I have with the story is itself is that it it does get so gnarly that it feels like like it feels like Sa- Sally and like uh, Gene Cousineau shouldn't be there anymore. <laughs> like they, sh- they probably should have been murdered a couple seasons ago, you know. Yeah, it does seem like they're they're struggling to keep those characters like relevant. But, but I mean, they they do such big shit every season. It seems it's hard to like. It's almost like they paint themselves in a corner. Like, how do you bounce back from that? Like, the season two finale especially was like, what the fuck? How, like, how do you do another season after that? And then with the way this one ended, it's the same thing. Like, what? Like, there's yeah, more. Where does it? Where does it go from here? How- yeah does this play out yeah i had to look it up i was like wait a second was that the series finale or the season finale? what happened and i guess they greenlit season four already so somehow he's gonna make it out of this situation there's gonna be more or unless whatever this situation leads to is the whole next season because i don't know does does it feel like maybe maybe i'm fucked up but because you guys binged it i kind of like had spaces between all the episodes i watched did it seem like this season covered a shorter span of time? Yes, 100%. Like, it seems like they only, they stretch like a couple of days into like an entire season. It, it was like a week. It was like okay. a week, maybe two. Yeah. Because it starts with Sally just finishing development on the show and getting you know, they recorded the pilot and got the green light and then went to premiere and then the next day were canceled and then all of this shit happened. So it's only, I would say probably a week or so because they, remember they pushed up the premiere of the show because another show with the same theme was coming out and they preempted it. Yeah, it was, was it the desserts, the dessert show? No, that it was... Pam. Oh, right, right. Pam with the exclamation mark. <laughs> Just desserts was the one that Sally confronts Natalie about. Right. Yeah, I just I, I my only issue with the show, I actually prefer it goes more into like less uh, I uh, it does less comedy and more of the the underground shit. But yeah, my one issue is I just I don't feel I feel like Hen- Henry Wink uh Gene Cousineau and Sally shouldn't be in the show anymore. Like, I love that you that you weren't so sure about what his real name was that yeah. you, you stopped and went to just referring to the character. Wait, gun to my head. I'm going Harry Winkler. <laughs> that's that's his porn star equivalent. He's Henry it's Winkler. Henry Winkler. Oh, I thought I was gonna mess up the Winker. I almost called him Winker. <laughs> But it was, it's I like how like you got tripped up on a very very easy name Henry Winkler, but remember Gene Cousineau. Well, I just I just watched fucking six episodes. That's like, true. Ten hours ago, so that's fresh in my mind. Um, I really like for all of them. I think Noho Hank was the star of this season. Yeah, I feel like he usually people usually fuck with him. Noho Hank, he's I like Noho Hank, and I liked him and Cristobal together, which is was very weird because I don't I. It's been so long, I, you know. I watched season two when it first aired, that the guy who plays Cristobal is one of the lead bikers in the FX Sons of Anarchy spinoff Mayans. Mine's like Mexican Sons of Anarchy. Correct. So, nice. seeing him play such an opposite character was a lot of fun and very enjoyable. Huh. I mean, he's a gangster nonetheless. Um, and what... his wife is ridiculous. Yeah. In Mayans. No, in Barry. Right. Okay. I agree. I just didn't know which one, which story you're referring to. Do you guys want to revive like a really, really old segment? It depends. Is it going to get us in trouble? Yes. Yes, I do. Just Twitter diarrhea. 
Oh, oh no. Oh yes. <laughs> so Jeff, so this is going to be a very boring answer because I know what you're talking about. No, but go ahead. I kind of figured, but Jeff tweeted, "I'm growing a mullet." With a bunch of exclamation points. Which I'm gonna based on your reaction, I'm I'm guessing that was that was a that was a joke, that's a work. But man, I really feel like you should reconsider. I don't have enough hair game to really grow a mullet, to be honest. I don't think I can even do it. Uh eh, I guess I prob I possibly could. But no, I, I won a I won a golf bet yesterday and the guy that I that I bet on that one had a mullet. Oh. So that's why I tweeted that out. Yeah, really boring answer that I knew you weren't going to be into. I feel like you should. Because you've said... I, can't, I don't you're, think you're, I can. You're giving up on the dating apps, right? Uh, like you have no yeah, interest in getting into I've the dating I've indefinitely sus- suspended myself from dating apps, yes. And having a mullet could be a barrier to, to getting laid. But... Doesn't help. If... If you have no interest in that department anyway, might as well do something fun. So I'm saying I don't think I have the hair game anymore to do anything fun with my hair. I said the Try same it. thing about facial hair, but I kind of grew some. I believe I'm in sad. you. I believe in your follicles. I, I don't. I don't believe in my follicles. I, mean, I wouldn't look good in a mullet. It was just a celebratory tweet because I finally... Got off the fucking schneid and golf betting. I've had a shitty ma- uh, major season. I finally uh, got back to the got back to the top. Picked a winner. Pretty happy about it. You've got hair growing in the back, right? Yeah. All you have to do is just not cut that, dude. I think it would take me years. You could throw like uh, a couple beads. In, in there, like in a strand. And eventually, I might have to get on the dating app or do something about my virginity. And tie like a little feather on the end of it? No, I shouldn't have tweeted that out. I'm Jeff the Bounty Hunter. <laughs> what, which shows up on your radar and what doesn't? Was it just because of uh, the, the bunch of comments that the Puminati left? No, I saw it very shortly after. Like, I opened up Twitter and I think you had just tweeted it. I don't know. Uh, I got all excited. It was, was a gambling win. Yeah. Well, that's a bummer. Yeah. Uh, all right. Well, we did get an email, and it's an interesting one since we've been talking about movies a lot this episode and controversial thoughts on movies. This is uh. This might this might bridge us back back to one being Jeff. This person, Jason, aka Butcher of Bakersfield sent an email with the subject, Dom's Movie Ratings. And he says, Hey guys, I have to agree with Dom on a few few movie ratings. Goodfellas, The Godfather, and The Matrix are all bad, boring, overhyped movies. The first two being so unbelievably slow and The Matrix just wasn't entertaining. I've never been able to finish get Goodfellas or any of The Godfather movies. I watched the original Matrix Matrix once and wasn't impressed, nor ever saw any sequels. I know these are unpopular opinions, but I have to back up Dom. P.S. If you want to watch a really ridiculously so bad it's good movie, check out Frogs. It's a horror movie from 1972 and features a young Sam Elliott. It's probably the most ridiculous movie I've ever seen. Sorry, I'm not accepting movie recommendations after the Grand Budapest fiasco. Um, definitely not excited by frogs, even though Sam Elliott's a solid American. I don't know. I don't, I don't even know how I'm supposed to respond to this stupidity. Is this, this is from the butcher of Bakersfield? Yeah. Jesus Christ, man. He didn't like, I wonder what he thought of Armageddon. Didn't like Matrix. Didn't like, what what was the other one? He didn't like Terminator 2? No, Goodfellas and the Godfather. Okay. I don't agree with this at all. I don't. But I could see someone making an anti-Godfather argument. Like, just in, just the pacing being a little slow. Like, if, if like, like, the homie Rich. Rich effectively hasn't seen any movie before the year 2000. 
you know? <laughs> so if you, if he, if he, if he goes back and watches a movie in the seventies, it might just be too slow for him. Right. Not have enough going on. I'll listen to that. Right. Very certain circumstances. I'll listen to that. I can't really listen to like Goodfellas and Matrix being bad movies. Like, again, I think Godfather is on the, the short list of best movies ever, like that discussion. But again, because of the age and whatnot and, and the tempo of it, okay, I'll listen to you not enjoying. I don't see how. I don't know. I, I think the, the Goodfellas one. Like, this guy is now the second person that I've ever met that is not like the Goodfellas. He hated Goodfellas so much, he didn't even finish it. Oh, a Grand Budapest Hotel, but, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Where did it lose you? When did it, when, when wasn't it good? I just, I don't, I don't, I don't know. It's like you, you shit on me for being a, a troll for troll trolling sake. That's what I feel like this is. You think it's I a mean, troll job? Kind of, but I mean, maybe this is just genuine. I mean, this could be this guy's genuine opinion. I mean, Dom's not really trolling when he says this shit, right? He just doesn't like these movies so, somehow. Right. I mean, I don't even know if Dominic is such like a genuine person. I don't even know if he's capable of trolling. <laughs> like, wouldn't that just like make you shit your pants, Shuddy Boy, if, if Dom trolled you on something? It would be so out of character for <laughs> him that it would be concerning, yes. And Dom is probably the most across the board, like, genuine person i've ever met i've known dom for decades shuddy's known him even longer and i've never known dom to really change one iota he's the same guy that's as real as it gets you see exactly yeah yeah so maybe this is the butcher baker feels genuine honest opinion but i mean it's stupid and it's more dangerous and more shitty than Kevin's stupid Grand Budapest <laughs> Hotel opinion. I mean, and I don't know if you guys agree with me on this, but like when I see such treachery come from Dom, I find it incredibly funny and almost endearing. But from somebody else, it's like infuriating. I don't know why Dom I, gets such a pass, but like it's like my, my, my fists were balling up while reading that email. Well, I mean, you just spent so much time with Dom, right? That's true. It's like we're just meeting Butcher Bakersfield, <laughs> you know, theoretically, and he's coming out the gate with the hottest of takes. Or so it's <laughs> like, I don't know if we can continue this friendship. What else are you going to say? You you think football and basketball are gay? I mean, how much more offended? What do you think of my family? Like, you've offended me enough already. I mean, <laughs> I, I don't I don't know. I don't know how I, I couldn't continue. Like, just imagine, say this was an email. Imagine you're starting a conversation with someone at, at, at Ellis Mania, right? Meet one of the Puminati. And this guy's like, hey, just wanted to let you know, I actually think Matrix and Goodfellas sucks. Like, all right, man, I'm, I got to go get another beer. And then I'm never going to return to that conversation. Never. I'm yeah. never going to return to that combo. I might even, like, if I'm hope, holding an open-ended drink, like a glass of wine or a martini, I might splash it in that person's face. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just gonna fucking chug it, and they're like, "All right, I gotta get another one." See ya. <laughs> I mean, it's just such a like you can't be fucking serious, dude, right? I mean, what about the gun battle in the Matrix, like with Trinity and Neo and the agents? Whack! It, it was whack. Is that what you're saying? Like, what the fuck? Yeah, like, like Goodfellas and The Godfather were just too boring for you, and then a movie that revolutionized action and is like start to finish crazy, crazy, never before seen gunfights like, eh, too boring, too much action. Yeah. I don't know. I'm kind of interested. I'm perplexed. I shouldn't be, but I will respond with a, well, what do you think as a five decker? All right. If, if he, it's... if he said Armageddon, would you start to question your own takes? Absolutely not. Oh. I know Armageddon is the fucking zenith of movie making. Oh no, this is the company I roll with? No, I don't care. I <laughs> fucking drive the Armageddon bandwagon. I don't give a fuck who gets on. I know I'm right. I don't even have Fair to enough. look. I don't even have to look. Good point. Fair enough. 
All right, let's wrap up and chip away at Mount Voicemail with some voicemails. Yay! Kevin, you bitch. Jeff, you fucking eat farts. All right, let's see. Where did we leave off? Okay. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure it was this. Let's see. Hey, last time party hour. Hey, hey. Ken here. Canada Kevin, Ken. You hear God damn it. I'm sorry. I talked over him. Hey, last time party hour. Canada Ken here. Kevin, you hear that? This guy, Canada Ken, kidnapped a child. Have you heard the band Born Sugar? But there's this new song out called Sun Eater. And oh, man, it kicks ass. It Sun Eater. It's out all like dark and heavy. Really death metal y with, uh, I don't know, sort of like, uh, uh, I don't know, dying fetus type feel at the beginning. I get what you're saying. And then all of a sudden it blasts into this, like, cool power metal. Oh, man. Man, it's not translating uh, the way he thinks it is, trying to get us to listen to parts of this song. Kind of just sounds like squealing brakes in New York City traffic. Fuck yeah, I have no ass. idea what's going on. Yeah, I'm kind of lost here. Is he trying to get us to listen to a death metal song? Yeah, so I'm pretty sure Sun Eater is a song by Job for a Cowboy. And I gotta agree with Canada Ken. If 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 you're talking about the Job for a Cowboy song, solid, solid death metal song. That does kick ass. Or is he talking there's a Lorna Shore version of it? Oh. Which is what he might be referring to. Let's uh, see, I'm. Oh, Sun Eater. Yeah, I guess is an album by Job for a Cowboy. I thought it was a song on there too. Uh, yeah, he's talking about the Lorna Shore song for sure. Okay, yeah, I'm a dumbass. Sun Eater is the name of the Job for a Cowboy album, which I do enjoy. Lorna Shore never got into. Um, Shuddy, are you aware of them? Because I'm in my head, I'm picturing like a screamo guys with the fucking. Long black hair, side part, and eyeliner and shit. Well, I'm not. I've heard of them. I've heard them maybe a few times. Never gone out of my way. Um, I mean, this song is hard as fuck. Um. But, oh wow, the guy, the singer, kind of looks like Flock of Seagulls. Yeah, I. It's hard to describe what they look like. Like they definitely look like. They could have been, if you would have held up a picture of them and My Chemical Romance, you might think they were My Chemical Romance or something like that, <laughs> like a band like that. Like, yeah. I, I don't, I, they don't, from the, this, the video for Sun Eater, I don't think they look like a typical metal band like that. Man, I just tried to pull up a picture of the band and it said the, the headline attributed to this picture says Lorna Shore singer accused of sexual misconduct by multiple women. Good. Yee. Yipes. All right. Well, thanks, Kennedy Ken. We'll we'll move on from your prop <laughs> your problematic I didn't fucking realize metal. They're from Warren County, New Jersey, which is right over the Oh shit. Uh the river from Easton. All right, let's take a listen to this human. Hey guys, I'm just listening to your dental stories on uh, the latest podcast and I thought I'd give you a quick run up of what happened uh, when I had to get my wisdom teeth out. I was in my early mid 20s, was pretty broke and couldn't afford to go to the dentist, didn't have a real job with no coverage and uh, after a couple months of my wisdom teeth causing a ton of pain and asking people and looking around, I found a lady who claimed to be a dentist overseas but said she can't practice in, in Canada because she's not licensed here, but she has a full setup in her basement. So she told me for $300 cash, she would remove all of my wisdom teeth that were starting to come in. Deal. Holy shit. This is awesome. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> and I agreed, but she couldn't put me under or do anything like that. So I went to see this lady. I went into her basement, and it was about a... 50-year-old downtown house, nothing nothing special. I went to her basement. She did have a dental chair. And we spent about three, four hours in that chair, and she only got two of my four wisdom teeth out because they both shattered as she was trying to take them out. She was a pretty petite woman, so 
she had her knees on my lap while she was putting tools in my mouth trying to get my kind of sounds hot you get a boner put them teeth out and uh, reef from underneath them and try to wedge them out it was a pretty painful and nasty experience uh, after a few hours and she got the two out she told me she didn't have time to do all four so i paid her cash and she said i can come back anytime for the other two um, she did some stitches where she took the teeth out. I said, thank you, and I left, and I still have the other two wisdom teeth almost 10 years later in my mouth right now because uh, I haven't gone back. But that's my wisdom teeth. Uh, no sedation, no whatever, just tons of pain, and a uh, out-of-country lady who was nice enough to accept cash to do it. Anyway, nice you guys, enough. Bye. Oh, these fucking Canadians. <laughs> she was not... I'll do it for two hundred and seventy-five dollars. I'll get rid of the other two teeth. Just come, just come to Long Beach. I have a dental chair here in my uh, in my MSPH recording studio. Yeah, I'll undercut Jeff. I'll do it for two fifty. <laughs> I'll, I'll do it. Gonna... I'll do. It. I'll be like Tom Hanks in Castaway. I'll just get a coconut and a fucking ice skate. Yeah, and I I won't. It's the, it's for the job itself. All right, it's not for an hourly rate. So if it takes me eight hours, fuck it. I'm here to do the job, bro. I'll I'll I'll, I'll take two fifty or two seventy five for eight hours of dental work. What a fucking psychopath this guy is! <laughs> like at no point is he telling the story. Is he? Does he think like, man, this is kind of? I was kind of tripping. I probably shouldn't have done this. <laughs> like she was nice enough to take my money, <laughs> dude. What? <laughs> what a maniac what the fuck yeah like, Jesus that Christ. is like the start of a horror movie that's so fucking stupid like come on dude you're not really in the cult like that right like, yeah you also know, like you know, this is you live in Canada don't you guys have all that shit covered why are you going to fucking Mexico for a Brazilian butt lift <laughs> that's right I forgot about that in Canada's gay ass socialism how do you not have that covered since when do you need a job to get coverage in fucking Canada? The one time I went up there, I paid for your guys' medical uh, bills. I, I understand. This guy is a fucking danger. All right. What, what a maniac. Like, if you if you start a horror movie out like that, you'd be like, nah, dude, that's this is stupid. Like, who would just... Who would go to some fucking lady's basement for fucking pro bono dental work? It's not pro bono if you have to pay for it. Ah, uh, excuse me. Um, yeah, black uh, market dental work. Excuse me. Yeah, black. Yeah, not pro bono. Like they, he, pro- he essentially went to where Jack Nicholson went in Batman after getting out of the vat of chemicals. Uh, <laughs> like, uh, yeah, like pro bono would probably you might be better off, right? Because in that case, you, you're having like. Maybe like a, a kid from dental school is going to practice on you. He's almost there, but he doesn't really have the degree yet. But he's almost there. I can get it. Like I practice on a dummy. I can, I can Maybe get the Maybe ask the questions out. of why she's not licensed in Canada. Yeah. Yeah, I can't wait for, for this guy's follow-up voicemail where he's like, hey, I got a, got a pretty cool email from some guy in uh, Mexico offering him to turn me into a walrus. <laughs> He still talks normal, so that, that's good. Yeah, dude, I've never, I've never gotten my wisdom teeth taken out. I mean, I so I had to because my my bottom ones were impacted, so they kind of grew in on an angle, and it had a little bit of an an iceberg situation where just like on both my back ones, just this tiny, teeny little piece of tooth was sticking out, and food would constantly like slide under that tooth between the gums. And my gums would always get inflamed and irritated and stuff, and it sucked. But I would always be able to get a, like a scraper or toothpick or something, and it was painful. But I I would dig out like the popcorn kernel or whatever the fuck was stuck there, and then the gums would go back to normal. And one time, it was just not happening, and the gums were getting like nastier and bigger. So I went in, and the guy was like, "All right, we have to get this one out right now." And I couldn't get put under because I drank coffee or some shit that day, and. It was it was kind of like he was talking about this chick. The dude was fucking putting a knee on my chest for for leverage and just cranking my fucking tooth and stuff. And then when they 
like the when you get a wisdom tooth taken out, the biggest thing you have to worry about is dry socket to where if the, the, the cavern left behind doesn't heal properly, it just stays empty and you can see straight down into the bone. And I'm, I don't think there's a lot you can do to reverse that. So they gave me this little spray bottle to just like fill with saline water and squeeze in there to wash the wound out. And I'll never forget the first time I did it. It blew like chunks of fucking food, chewed up food and stuff that had gotten trapped in there out and smelled so bad, it almost like knocked me to the ground and knocked me unconscious. It was, it was like, it was worse than stinky tofu. It was like if you put stinky tofu in a porta potty that had been left at a construction site for six months, that was the fucking smell. Revolting. So the fact that, that you just terrible. let some some lady stitch up your fucking wisdom to two wisdom teeth wounds in a basement. Christ, you are the bravest voicemail caller ever. She's nice enough to let me go to the ATM real quick and buy her. <laughs> Man. Yeah, just come back. I'll get the other two next week. The guy never came back. <laughs> like, of course not. I don't know why you went there in the fucking first place. Uh, uh, I don't know. I've never gotten my wisdom teeth taken out, and they I've never had like any pain or anything or anything like poking out. So maybe I'm good. <laughs> I mean, uh, you could is be. There, Some is people... there any chance that I'm good? Yeah. All right. There, there's, I mean, I feel like a majority of people at some point, for one reason or another, have to get their wisdom teeth out. But I mean, it's not everybody. There's definitely a chance you could be one of those people that just you got good luck with your chompers. Yeah, like I heard when I was like 16, well, fuck went the orthodontist. So yeah, you're probably gonna have to get your wisdom teeth taken out, but maybe uh, not right now. Maybe when you're in your mid 20s, but that's probably the latest that it can get done. I'm gonna turn 36. I'm like I'm chilling. I don't know. I don't. I wait. Yeah, I wait. If your past mouth that doesn't mark. hurt. You don't need to get them taken out. I guess I'm good. Yeah. Got a little lucky. I guess my, my mouth just knew I was poor. Didn't have coverage. <laughs> I'm going to have to go up to the fucking, the witch, the Canadian witch doctor. Yeah. If shit, if shit doesn't work out for you, Jeff, I, I mean, I can, t- I can text you this guy's number right now. If you just want to keep <laughs> it on fire. Sure. Hopefully he kept your email address or something. Hey, do you know that witch's address? My fucking mouth hurts. She's going to, I'll be like, Hey, this guy told me you charged him like $150. I'm going to live all the <laughs> fuck out of her. <laughs> Yeah, uh, he said the deal he got was two loonies and two toonies. You still doing that? <laughs> yeah, and, and, and you provide catering, he said. Or you, you could be like, <laughs> I, I'll offer you um, real money, not that fucking silly Monopoly money. I'll give you five U.S. dollars. <laughs> yeah, and you got to buy me the ice cream afterwards. <laughs> All right, let's do one more voicemail before we before we go for the week. Hey, boys. Just listening to the uh, most recent Easter egg from uh, the newest episode. You guys are talking about fast food places. I'm in Ontario, Canada, and the KFC Taco Bell combos are everywhere up here, and the A&W locations as well. So if you're ever looking to get some, come up to Canada. Yeah, maybe, maybe before I get my wisdom teeth taken out. Got to hit up Tim Hortons and get those little Timmy bites. Uh, what else did it? What did he say? He said KFC and Taco Bell. They're called Tim Bits, Jeff. What did I say? Little Timmies? Timmy bites. Timmy bites. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my bad. I didn't mean to pat you on top of your head, Canada. Yeah, and not, not trying to, to do one upmanship, but here in America, we have Kentucky Fried Taco Hut. Where yeah. you can get KFC, Taco Bell, and Pizza Hut in one sitting under the same roof. And, I mean, god damn it, that's just magical. Yeah, America takes a step further. Yep. Um, real quick, do want to give a salute and shout out. Uh, one year ago today, we lost our homie Bat Dad. A pillar, a pillar of the Puminati. Doesn't it feel a, like it's been that long. I know. But um, yeah, he he always left the best voicemails. Met him at a couple Ellis Manias. Nicest guy in the world. Super funny. 
And um, just a bummer to lose that guy so so damn young. So we salute you, Chase Jensen, a.k.a. the Bat Dad, a.k.a. Speedy. We love you and miss you, homie. Here, here. Uh, all right, everybody. Well, there you have it. There's your show for the week. I apologize. I know I'm off my fucking game. Been in the shitter lately, so uh, I'll I'll do my best to pull up pull the nose up for next week. Yeah, Shuddy, you're gonna have to watch the Grand Budapest Hotel to settle off that. Uh, <laughs> I'll do it. I'll settle do that it. dust up. <laughs> Man, never well, thought we'd get. It, I'll, I'll work it into the other things I plan on watching this week, including the Bob's Burgers film, um, the Streaming Wars Part Two. What are we doing? And how, how serious are you guys taking? Nope. Because I can't fucking wait for that movie to come out. I think it's going to be Honestly, awesome. what I, when yeah. um, we saw Thor, they showed a different trailer for Nope. Yeah, same. That made the first trailer, it made, the, it looked like oh, it explained what was actually fucking happening in the movie. <laughs> yeah, I was bummed out by that. I it made me more into wanting to see it. The first trailer, I was like, I have, I don't know, I don't want to know what's going on. And then I watched that, I'm like, oh fuck, this sounds cool. So I'm into it. I don't know if I'll see it this weekend though. Yeah, I, I don't like know. that. There's a different TV trailer than a movie trailer. I thought that was cool. I know what you're talking about. I I saw that trailer before one movie that I recently saw. It does it. give, I'm sure it gives a lot of it away. Like it explains everything, but yeah, it made I was me more interested in seeing it, which is probably the feedback they got from the first trailer. I don't know. I kind of like that. He was leaving it super vague and it's just like, all right, new Jordan Peele horror. Fuck it. I'm in there's aliens or some shit. You got me. And then that, the, yeah, the one that that showed before Thor was so long and showed so much stuff. I was like, ah, Man, that kind of I was planning on just going in knowing as little as possible and but yeah, I mean I'm I'm definitely still in. I just don't know you know, I'm going to be in New Orleans this week and I don't know if it's going to if it's going to work out if I'll be able to see it before next week. Are you going to see it this weekend, Jeff? I I'm going to try, yeah. I don't know. I might go. Yeah, I'm going to try to go one of these days. Probably Prob- Friday or Saturday, right? Yeah, I don't know. I probably if if anything I'm going to I think I can get it in before the end of the weekend for sure. Cause I need something to review on next week's episode. Kevin, are you like when you land again or return? Is you return Monday? Do we have to record on a different day next week? No, no, no. We're I'm, I'm flying back on Sunday, Sunday night. Are you going to go like after the, after you land, maybe could you see it then? It's <laughs> Jeez, John. I want to fucking review this thing. Dude. I mean, I'm, I'm excited. I have made that move before I have, like yeah, come back and gone straight to a movie theater. You did it recently. I forget for what yeah. movie, but it was a big one. Yeah, I'm forgetting which one too. Maybe Top Gun? Oh no, you saw, no, that, I saw with that with your folks. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I uh, I'll try. Uh, but no promises. It's not looking good, but we'll see. Um if you want more MSPH in your life, please check out our Patreon, patreon.com slash mad scientist party hour. We are Currently within, within the thralls of MasterChef Season 12. And, um, man, last week's episode. I have to say it was a masterpiece on Jeff's part, I think. Yeah, you definitely killed it, Jeff. Jeff being so upset by veganism and vegan dishes made for a very, very entertaining hour-plus podcast. It's the final 16, right? Or is it the final yeah. 17? We're going into the top. That was, This was the top 17. We're going to the top 16 now. Because that's oh, how really everybody now. That's how everybody measures their merit in a competition. Like, I didn't win, but I made it in the top 17. So, you know, it yeah. worked out. I was number 17 of 20. So, you know, I made it to the top 17. I was right in the mix. Things break a little differently, and I can pull that fucking thing down. <laughs> yeah, so the five dollar tier of our Patreon gets you Crafter Jeff Shuddy Edition episodes as well as the weekly podcast we do in addition to this one. And then the ten dollar tier has all of our individual shows. Um and uh Queef or No Queef whenever that comes back. Tons and tons of content. If you haven't signed up, you get access to everything. So Can you remind me who won season one of Queef or No Queef? 
all around the all around victor i don't know i remember it being close it was a devastating double fisting by shuddy boy just decimating myself and jeff clark's buttholes oh the sky just opened up uh oh oh god army pa it's the rapture raindrop it was it was hot as balls today like you walk outside and it the humidity was heavy Mm. Very moist air, which is why it's thunderstorming now. All right. And Shuddy Boy with the weather. Just covering all bases. All done. We really <laughs> killed it this episode. Yeah. Mm. Um, you can also follow us on Instagram. I'm at Kevin Craft. At Shuddy Boy. Uh, at Jeff R. Records. And at MSPH Podcast on both Twitter and Instagram. <laughs> if you want to send us some emails mad scientist party hour at gmail.com and if you want to see video of these episodes youtube.com slash mad scientist party hour every view subscription and like uh does wonders for our algorithm we're really just on the cusp of world domination my friends this fucking close god that close i did get a message on instagram last night from kino who's goomer pomp on <laughs> oh, instagram yeah. uh that he was drunk as fuck in paris playing msph for his friends nice so he didn't specify if it was some paris in the united states or paris france but i'm hoping it wasn't paris texas and it was <laughs> actually giving us a little bit of international notoriety. See, I'm just picturing Goomer Poimp in Paris, France, pinning some poor Frenchman up against the wall and shoving a phone in his face and be like, listen, listen! And the Frenchman being like, je ne sais quoi. Not understanding a single word coming out of our fucking mouths. And then drunk Goomer Poimp being like, that was the funny part. Fucking laugh. I wonder how laugh, John Frenchy. the Frenchman would play in France these days. My guess is they would hate him. <laughs> as well as Steve the Singing Hindu. Probably I would not Steve go over Steve the well. Singing Hindu is, could, would not, does not have a career in 2022. No, absolutely not. No. I mean, <laughs> he, didn't have a, he didn't have a career in 1999. I... Deliberately went with Jean over him because. <laughs> um, and also, I wanted to shout out uh, R Zips on Instagram, Benicio Del Taco. Uh, he hit me up because the comic book store his girlfriend Kate works at got a massive Masters of the Universe collection in in trade, uh, and wanted to know if I wanted anything out of it i want every single one and i was able well i mean yes because he was sending me pictures i was like oh my god and it's all the stuff i don't have because of uh it's on the expensive end of things these days yeah but i did manage to get a transforming he-man so i'm pretty stoked about that huge pickup nice huge pickup you gonna add that to the collection back there yeah it's gonna it's Brings me uh, one figure away from completing the Super 7 Vintage line. I'm surprised you haven't replaced all the sheetrock in that room you're in, Shuddy Boy, with just protective glass and just transform that whole room into a storage case. Mm. No, there's really not much more that I can get without going into out of the toys and into the other things that take up space, like the toothbrush holder, you know, like the other collectible random shit they've done over the years. Is it taking all of your willpower and might to not start collecting toothbrush holders? No, it's a space thing. Uh, There's, I have defined limits to where it can go. And (laughs) Sharon has zoning restrictions. And so, (laughs) I'm living within my guidelines. I'm happy with my collection and there's still, I'm still getting new stuff because they're still making new toys. So uh, do you, is there a, is then, there a part of you that wants a toothbrush holder? I mean, uh, f- fuck. Yeah. There's every also, wants as a kid, I had a toothpaste, a Skeletor topper that went 
on the top of the toothpaste. Uh, and every now and then one of those comes across my radar, but I don't pull the trigger. I want so, it. I want it with every fiber of so my butthole. Just, it is a self-control thing and I'm managing to have it. It looks like it's working. But that stuff is also super expensive because things like that were it's sold vintage for children who played with them and beat the shit out of them. Uh, so if they've survived the last 40 years... Yeah, you're they're... you're relying on some shuddy boy of Christmas past who walked so you could run. Mm-hmm. Well said. And you're paying for it. And you're paying for it. And I don't want to do that. I feel you. I don't want to buy it either. All right, everybody. Thanks for listening. And we'll catch you next time. But until next time... Oh, something...